All right, I'm gonna start this video in the front with the mango tree. There's millions of them in bloom all across Florida. They have a very distinctive smell. You can tell when you're near one. It's sort of like the cross between a flower and a smelly sock. So it's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but there's some sour in there as well. It's very distinctive when you smell it, you know it. So we don't do grass here. It's not a shred of intentional grass on the property. Uh, whatever we do find, we pull. And it's usually out of this area. But this is a combination of sunshine mimosa or ground mimosa, which is a Florida native ground cover, and perennial peanut, which is also a Florida native ground cover. And this is uh, right here. This is um, dune sunflower. And you can find this literally growing on the dunes. It doesn't need any soil at all, really. Uh, just a little foothold in the sand, and it'll it'll uh, stretch itself across the sand. Uh, same way with like a railroad vine, if you ever heard that. Railroad vine does the same thing. It stretches itself across the sand, makes really cool flowers. Some people have even um, put it up on their roofs and uh, had a train to run crisscross back and forth on their roof. Uh, the the main theme that you'll notice in our garden is the bromeliads. Vermiliads, vermiliads. So you'll see plenty of those. I got some nice blooms going. This is a little bit older. This one's just coming up. Um, this is quailberry, which is a another Florida native ground cover. Don't mind all the mango leaves. They keep dropping. I cleaned them up the other day, and there's uh, and they just keep dropping. It's the time of year. But anyway, this quailberry is a really cool little plant. It's as big as it gets. It just spreads across the ground. It always has these little red berries on it all the time. So if you're looking for a place, a small place to cover because it's very slow growing, you can put some quail berry in there and it'll it'll cover up a little spot, maybe a little black uh, uh, blank patch you got somewhere. And of course more bromeliads, bromeliads, bromeliads. Uh, some full-size pineapples. They'll, they'll fruit in probably another year and a half or two. Uh, a little desert rose back there. Some sedum, that green stuff. Some mondo grass, which is the dwarf mondo grass, uh, Florida native. And then we have a full-size mondo grass, which will spread by itself. And I'll show you how that happens. It just spreads like grass underneath. And so that we planted this full-size mondo. And now it's got little shoots coming up a little bit a ways. So it'll fill in that area in between there. And, you know, we'll let it go until we don't want it to be in an area, and then we'll pull it out. So we'll get some orchids getting ready to bloom here. Some of them are blooming. Some of them are spiked with flowers on them, getting ready to bloom. Some more sedum. And we let this stuff grow wild. Uh... Shoot, the name escapes me now. Um, it'll come back to me. Anyway, this stuff. It's a Florida native. Um, and it just, uh, it pretty much grows wild everywhere. We let it grow where we feel like it and where we don't want it. We pull it up. A new uh, bush that I just got, the um, uh, gardenia. It's, it's struggling a little bit, but it's got new growth on it, so I'm going to leave it there and see how it does. Col coleus and bromeliads are the theme. <laughs> a lot, some of the theme anyway, so you see a lot of bromeliads everywhere and coleus. And these bromeliads are, are the type that will climb, so they just keep producing more and more. They don't really flower per se, though they will in the, in the middle, but... Um, you know, like the store bromeliads, like these guys, they will flower, make a big spike, be all showy. And then the main plant dies. It'll put out some pups on the sides of it, but the main plant dies. So what these do is they just basically perpetually grow, and then they just keep climbing, reproducing, uh, spreading out. And uh, so that's what you see here. Um, we'll take you to... I hear a crack, crack, crack. I think there's a blue jay somewhere. Cracking open a, a seed or... A, peanut shell or something so this is um, 
beautyberry, Florida native bush. It hasn't really started to get the berries on it yet, but it will throughout the summer and in the fall. It'll be filled with, uh, this is a white one, so it'll be filled with white berries. And then you can see here we've put some bromeliads on our robolini here as well. These are newer ones that we just tied, but they will, they'll um, sort of do their thing and just make their way up the tree and and fill in and, and sort of fill in in the bottom and, and uh, basically cover the base as they sort of climb at the same time. So, And again, uh, a combination of different things, different ground covers. Um, this is mostly uh, ground mimosa. And uh, they make, now the, it's later in the afternoon, so the flowers are gone, but they make the little puffball flowers. This is what... what, what uh, is left at the end of the day, but in the morning they're bright pink little puffball flowers. This is a Bermuda uh, strongbark, Bahama strongbark. Sorry, not Bermuda, Bahama strongbark. You can see that uh, the berries. This thing constantly flowers and constantly have berries, and the bees love it. Pollinators love it. The birds love it. It constantly produces fruit of one kind or food of one kind or another. Uh, for um, nature and it's a thin growing tree so it doesn't take up a lot of room I mean, we've got it stuck here in this corner uh, and it's you know it's not obtrusive in any way um, it just kind of grows uh, narrow and it doesn't get real tall maybe 20 feet 30 tops this is um, necklace pod and this thing's claim to fame is it'll flower these little yellow flowers and then when it's done flowering it makes these little bean pods. We call them necklace pods. This is the the furry leaf kind. They say is not the native species, but um, I'm gonna call it native. And look, our our uh, oh god, I always forget stuff. Our uh, tree is blooming, and I don't mean I forgot the word tree. I mean I forgot the kind. Um, I know what it is. It's a Florida native. It'll come to me in a second. Uh, I always get brain fart when I do these stupid videos. I hope I get better at this uh, eventually. But anyway, um, this is a Florida native tree, super slow growing. It has these cool little purple flowers that'll turn into these uh, little pods that'll open up, split open, and they'll have little red seeds inside. And let's see, we got some shrimp plant, the pink shrimp plant. And a partridge pea down here with the little yellow flowers. And then we've got the uh, Coreopsis or tick seed, which is a Florida State wildflower, uh, coming up as, as it's getting closer to spring. These these just pop up naturally. We don't plant them or anything like that. That's why it's the Florida State wildflower. It'll grow pretty much everywhere. Uh, anything of note? You know the the uh, fire spike. Another Florida native. Uh, really cool, showy, spiky flowers, um, and uh, pollinators love it. Um, it's got the long flowers, so the uh, hummingbirds love it. Same way with the uh, fire bush, which is what this is, which usually is covered with these flowers here. Uh, but right now, because it's it's becoming early spring, it drops its leaves and basically starts from scratch. But uh, by the end of the summer, it'll be just filled. It'll be red. That's why they call it a fire bush. All the seeds have been eaten and dropped, and uh, all those red flowers will come back again. And I still can't remember the name of that tree. It's driving me nuts. But anyway. Um, so I'm going to keep this one short. I know the first one I did was 20 minutes. This one's going on 10. So I'm going to keep this one a little shorter. I'll uh, show you my little milk jugs here with the, the white fountain grass in it. And then I grew these vines from a sweet potato that I bought at Publix and just uh, took the sweet potato, put a few toothpicks in it, stuck it in water, let it root and then it would put out these vines and as the vines got longer i would i would carve them off of the the main sweet potato and plant them and that's what i have here and i still have the sweet potato in the back that i uh that i'm carving the vines out of so this was the first one that got the vines first <clears throat> and then i started putting vines into the second one so anyway so that's uh that's the front yard i'm sure there's tons of stuff i missed but um that's okay i'll uh 
I'm going to try to post more videos uh, as I'm out and about, different uh, things that I see that I'm interested in. Um, and uh, until then, um, enjoy your mangoes wherever you are. Uh, this is the this mango is a nice uh, smooth meat on the inside. It's uh, not fibrous at all. They're super super smooth. It's like butter. So anyway, um, that's it for the front for now. Have a good one.